You are listening to the Park Flyer Podcast, where we discuss our RC adventures. Welcome to the Park Flyer Podcast, where we discuss the ups and downs of the new RC Flyer. Join your hosts, Michael and Jay, as they take flight at the park. Now on with the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Park Flyer Podcast. I'm Michael from Arizona, and with me always are my good friends, Jay from the hills of Texas. And they came Mike in Texas. And we are excited because we got some uh, a special guest on today. Oh far, boy, oh far boy, away. oh boy. In the future. Yeah, so Tim, I know he's in the future. Tim let the cat out of the bag last time. Uh, that Tim. I know, right? Darn him. <laughs> he didn't know, but he asked us if he could let it out of the bag. But yes, tonight's episode, or this morning's episode, I guess... <laughs> We have AJ from ZoHD and Sonic Models. So uh, he's uh, standing by in the wings. So we'll get to him in just a second. Uh, but we have some really, really good news. We are going to try this out. Um, and as a result, we hope that as a listener, you will participate. And we're looking for some participation. But we kind of let it out of the bag last week as well in the form of we now have a valid number. Phone number. A valid number? You yeah, I should say a valid number. What's that mean? Well, man? You know what I mean. How about a hotline? We have a hotline to our listeners. Hotline. Hotline. Yeah, that's good. First time on the radio or hotline. doing podcast. Yeah, I have a valid number. <laughs> Call me anytime. <laughs> that's right. We do. <laughs> All right. So anyway, when you hear this podcast, copy this number down. Eight, air code 830-444-4943. That is the Park Flyer Podcast hotline. It is brand new. If you have comments, suggestions, or you just want to yell at us about escape versus ESC. I'm going to say escape, 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 escape. <laughs> Maybe cause someone to call. Awesome. Uh, but please give us a call, 830-444-4943. Let us know what you're doing. Let us know how we are doing or if you would like to hear about something. Uh, and then, um, you know, maybe we can get back in touch with you and, and, uh, have you on the show. Hey, hey does that spell out park flyer uh, podcast? Uh, no, 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 <laughs> I, I, I worked, I worked hard at trying to find a number that I could get that had something we could, you know, that, that would be, you know, park flyer or something. And yeah, I just, yeah. just I just couldn't do it. Uh, may, maybe no, if I, okay. I, I might try a little harder on that. So we may, may change that number, but I like that number because I like it, you know, 830-TEXAS-444-4943. That's true. So, four, four, you know. 444-4943. Yep. Yeah. Four, 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 kind of rolls four, off nine, your four, tongue. Three. Yeah, it kind of does. Okay. All well, right. we will so, post that number again on our Facebook listeners page, and uh, we'll try to put it on our bottom of our email, too, as one of the headers. Or that's photos. a great idea. Um, but, yeah, please give us a call. Let us know what you're doing. All right. Give us some ideas of what you'd like to hear about. And I guess technically, as Jay said, it is our hotline. Hotline. So, so, so one of the things I'd like to throw out there to the audience is I'd like the, I like the idea that they, that they call in and maybe even we interview them. So that yeah, the, the, yeah, that's true. That the whole idea really from my perspective would be that they call in and say what they want to talk about. Then we call them and – uh, have them join the podcast. I mean, that's what I think would be really great, and I'm and I'm, I'm hoping that listeners feel the same way. I hope so too. Well, we will see because we just put it out there. Phones are ringing off the hook right now. Our <laughs> switchboards are lighting up. That that was me, Mike. I was oh, calling. Oh yeah, sorry. you yeah. were calling. Yeah. All right, sorry. Well, well, I'm excited about our guest tonight. He is, or this morning, or whatever it is. I always say tonight because we usually record this at night. And then it comes out in the morning, but um, but he is the marketing director for ZoHD and Sonic Models. Been going back and forth for him uh, with a little bit, but this is kind of exciting to have him on. Right, right. So uh, let's get to it. Sounds good. All right. Well, our special guest tonight is uh, Ari Garcia. We're going to call him AJ for the rest of the podcast. That's uh, what he said his American friends uh, call him. So uh he is the marketing director at uh, Sonic Models and ZoHD. Is that how you say it? ZoHD? ZoHD, yeah, yeah. Yeah, ZoHD. All right. Well, welcome to the podcast, uh, AJ. Well, thank you very much, Michael. And Jay, 
Thank you for having me. I'm really happy to, to join you. This morning for me, this evening for you. This so, is true. Yeah. So uh, you are physically located in China, right? I mean the future. Yes. Yeah. So you were actually tomorrow. <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm in the future, yes. Um, I'm, I'm physically, yeah, yeah, based in, in China because, well, I mean, well, what, what I do is um, around here, so I kind of need to be around sure, here. Sure, sure. Yeah. No, we totally understand that. And uh, you, this is during the uh, the kind of the viral shutdown. You're doing okay over there and your family's doing well. Uh it has been it has been really complicated. Yeah, you know? I mean exactly the same as in, in the rest of the world. The, the probably the, the the thing that you you can feel here is that not um, the media is the, the coverage of the media is not so uh, transparent. Yeah, that makes maybe sense. Maybe the yeah, word. So sure. so uh, it, it, you have a feeling that it was lighter the situation, right. but actually it's not, and actually it's not over at all. The, the thing is also that this started like earlier here. So we already went through all the lockdown right, and, right. and the, 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 you know, craziness that, that um, not right now the more, more or less the rest of the world is going. But uh, now we are all like uh, fearing a second wave that mm -hmm. it seems is going to come very soon. So it's, I, I think, I think it's a global thing and at the same, more or less at the same level. I don't think there's a safe haven yeah. for, uh, especially in Asia. Yeah, no, yeah. no doubt. So, <laughs> how uh, how did you get affiliated with uh, Sonic Models? Now, the Sonic Sonic Models and ZoHD the same company? Are they two different companies, or are they parent companies? That's a long story. Um, I will give you a quick background, so so maybe you know guys how how this. Actually, we we don't talk much publicly, so this is a this is a very good chance uh, for for us to to let you not only your audience but many other people that maybe. Uh, had some some questions about how the company works sure. and, and how it's made, you know. Um, I joined the company around like two, well, almost three years ago. Uh, the company was already running. Um, there are many companies of Sonic Model style in China, you know. Um, we have mentioned them, but most of the kids or even some of the the the, the big brands, they are not Chinese. Let's say uh, the the. The products are made in in companies that are based in China. Um, so uh, the big difference was like uh, was that <clears throat> I had the, the chance to to join the company back then. I used to have a, a YouTube channel that wasn't super famous, but uh, the content was was pretty good. And through that YouTube channel, I I, I got to meet the 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 owner of the company let's say and 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 from there on we start working together some ideas I, I'm I'm a, I'm a I'm a marketing guy for trade let's say and and I've been doing cross cross culture marketing and international marketing for for other industries I've been flying RC planes since I remember since I, I got enough money to to buy one <laughs> and so it was always like yeah it was always there but I really never worked in the industry before. Which gave me some kind of, uh, of a fresh view regarding how to do marketing. Uh, they, they offered me to, to, to join them and to work uh, initially in the marketing and social media for the West, especially that is where, where most of Chinese companies uh, have the hardest time, you know, like to, to really convey the, 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 the message to the Western world regarding their products or with. We are doing it in a, because it's a cultural barrier, sure. you know, it's a cultural barrier. So I was I was pretty interested to 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 join them and and well, Sonic Mall and Series D are the same company, but it's two different brands with two different teams developing the products and etc. The only thing that is common is the marketing for both. I mean, the marketing team, even though if we use uh, a different approach for each uh, brand. Um, and yeah, I was already in China with, with other projects, and I, I think kind of start separating the company from all the others uh, because of the way. Not only we started doing the marketing back then, and, and we keep doing it, um, but um, also for the way that that we start developing the new products since uh, I joined the company. Not because of me, but maybe I bring some some kind of virus into them on how to change their way of thinking. You know. Mm -hmm. And the, the way of 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 thinking the markets, let's right. say. So, uh, and the rest is history. Yeah, 
several models after and yeah we we except for the current situation that the virus is is really i mean hitting every single industry yeah, now sure. yeah always. but except for that we can say that we we have done pretty good yeah lately well, I know that uh, both of our guys have uh, some of the models that uh, that you guys have. The yeah, I can see Jay has something there in the bag. Yeah. Oh yeah, the, I have the Zoe H uh, the Zoe HD Orbit I have back there. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but right, uh, pointing it's a little further, further over. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, it's a little further over that way. That way. Yeah, there, man. There we go. That way. Yeah. Off of the camera, you can't see it, but uh, I also have uh, uh, AR wing, a mini AR wing. So yeah, I'm a little familiar with your products, oh, oh, oh. and I'm I'm really enjoying. Them. Although I have to say, the one that I think is really special is the Orbit. Well, sometimes we don't realize, yeah, how how much the, the, the products have have been spread, you know, because uh, uh, we just a couple of minutes before we start talking, let's say uh, live. Um, we were talking with Michael regarding that uh, FPV is kind mm -hmm. of a niche, you right. know, it's not. It's, it's it's not like the mainstream RC. Um, well, no. it turned into kind of after, but to me, uh, FPV is still like some some very particular corner of the RC world. You know, not. Um, um, I, I'm coming from the time that where we were we were flying in 72 megahertz. You know, I mean that that time. Right. So, <laughs> uh, I, I I'm way before all the this this. Um, this hype of the, the FPV quads and racing quads and everything, right? Which to me is another tribe completely different from the, the RC pilot. Yeah. The night and day between the two cultures, between guys who are racing drones and, and doing that kind of FPV work. And then, you know, like you said, guys were just traditionally flying planes. Sure, sure. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, you remember guys uh, much better than me uh, that uh, I'm, I'm coming from a time where, where building the thing was uh, probably 90% of the fun, you know, and then probably 10% of the time you just spend it flying and crashing it and, <laughs> and rebuilding it again and so on. Right. So <laughs> actually I did get into multi rotors uh, initially when they, when you need to build your own frame with wood, you know, and all that stuff and use gyros to, there was no flight controllers or anything like that. And then when it got a little more like mainstream with DJI and all that stuff, I kind of left the, the, the multi rotors aside, but I mean, I still use them, but not more as a tool and not as a um, enjoyment, right. say. but it has nothing to enjoy actually to fly it. Mavic, you know, but in my in my perspective, of course. So uh, you you were mentioning that you do fl you said you flew quads. Was that something that you just kind of did, or have you always flown quads? Uh, I, I I started at the very beginning of them. You know, okay. like uh, uh, when when you really have to to to, to flush your own. Uh, ESCs, you know, mm -hmm. because the, the, there weren't any special like multi rotor uh, designed ESCs, and 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 we used like individual gyros, one for the yaw, one for the pitch and roll, one for each. Let's say you have three gyros, and 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 it, it was impossible to fly. Actually, we were crashing more than, than flying, but it was incredibly good, you know, experience. The motors were not coordinating in any in any way it was just uh like just to try to keep it in the air <laughs> it, that was a challenge right yeah right. that was a challenge well, they've come a long way since then well it's it's been yeah it's been because i'm talking about maybe 2009 yeah. was that or maybe 2008 mm -hmm. 2009 so it's been yeah it's been more than 10 years and uh yeah well now it's insane i mean the, the amount of tech and 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 how fast the things have developed in that area it's it's insane right you can have a tiny whoop with HD video today that, that can fly 20 kilometers, you know, and, and look look you through the window, you know, that's insane. Uh, I still prefer, widely prefer to, to fly fixed wing planes, you know, fixed wing aircraft. Yeah. I think it's, uh, that, that that's where the, the, at least my little heart lives, you know, in that, in that area. Right, right. So uh, the way that we got hooked up with AJ is that uh, he actually posted on our Facebook listeners group. There was something going on, and, and somebody, uh, one of our listeners, had posted an ad that you guys had put out on this new Lion 
pack batteries. Yes. And uh, you, you kind of made mention that it was this new technology, or not really new technology, but it's just this new uh, product that had come out on the market. And yes. so one of our guys actually got into this conversation with you, and I picked up on it. And I'm like, hey, well, why don't we have AJ on and have him explain a little bit about the Lion Pack? So th- this isn't new technology. It's just older technology that's been updated, is from what I understand. Exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, I w- I'll give you a little background regarding the batteries. Actually, we, we started, uh, the company initially never, never got into any electronics, right? And well, one, one part of this, this reform that I, I, I got, uh, the company into is to, to, to start developing some electronics because we do have the people with the knowledge and the experience to do it. It's just that before they didn't have the confidence to, or, or how to plan uh, a, a, an electronic product that is completely different than, than just a phone plane, right? Through that, uh, we develop many things like like uh, lightning like kits and for 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 example for the neon the the orbit neon that the Jay has there in the back, and then some even a flight controller called, called Pilot, and then we got into the batteries because these batteries the the cells that we're using they're called eighteen six fifty have been in the market for, for a long time. The the problem with these batteries is to find a cell that is not going to explode in your face, let's say, <laughs> or it's going to perform. Yeah, that's always a good thing. Or it's going to perform in the way you expect. No, no, that that's that's the truth. I mean, for every good one, you find a thousand that are completely fake and and a yeah, complete ripoff. Even to us, I mean, I don't know how many I bought. And how many companies are going in touch with until we find the supplier that has something that is legit and that can really work. Uh, well, but eventually we got after all that that pain and and, and tears and blood, we we get uh, in in contact with this this company that manufactures this. I mean, they manufacture for everything, you know, like e e bikes and whatever else. But it's very high. They, uh, I visit the, the the factory. They have a very high standard for everything, from from the packaging to the QC to everything. So it kind of fit the bill of what we were needing. And then um, what we wanted to do, because except for some small companies around the world, there wasn't a company that was making these packs massively or widely available to the to to the pilots you need to buy the cells on your own maybe banggood or whatever else and try to solder them you know and if you're lucky enough and it doesn't you know it didn't explode in the process you 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 will end up with a pack that is going to look terrible but it's going to work let's say and takes a long time unless you have like a proper welding machine you know the 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 electrical one uh, you need to to solder with with pain, etc. It's, it's a pain. It's a pain. Uh, we, we we've been doing it, and it's a complete pain. We we set a very very nice um, environment to create these these professionally made packs, and to make them available at a reasonable price, and with a warranty, with something that you can say, well, I'm not buying this, you know, in the black market, and God knows how it's going to go. So yeah, uh, those are the, the the lion packs, and they're they're selling really well. We um, so far we have a two S model, a three S, two S one P, three S one P, and then in four S we have one P and and two P. That it's uh, uh, let's say why it would be equivalent to um, three thousand five hundred in one P and seven thousand in two P. But I, I think you know. Um, right what i'm talking about uh but um and those more or less match all our models or planes so, so, let's say in 80 percent we, we we cover all our planes and they are good for any other models too so, so do you have 2200 batteries? Uh, i knew that was coming <laughs> three cell 2200 i I have I have a box full of them if you want. I can send you. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right. That's my that's my yeah yeah. I, I used to have more more twenty two hundreds than 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 underwear uh, <laughs> until uh, yeah the step the step puffing up you know and uh, it's a it's a need to get rid yeah, of. Yeah, no doubt. Um, the the twenty two hundred. Let's say the three S twenty two hundred. 
that is a, the, 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 the golden brick, let's say, uh, for, for most of our, our RC pilots. Um, yeah, the, the one that, the, the 3S that we have right now, 3,500. It's 3,500, yeah. Yeah, 3,500 is, is the one that more or less we match. It's much smaller than a, a, a 2,200 pack, a bit lighter, but it's more more dense, you know, the, the energy. Uh, so, so you're saying it's the same size as a 2,200 currently? It's a little smaller. Okay. Like 3,500 is a little okay. smaller. Than yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll take that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that works for me. <laughs> Like, there's a mic is like a little thing is like grabbing it. Oh, give me, give me, give me. It's like a kid. I mean, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we'll, I mean, we'll see you over. We'll see you over some guys. It's really yeah. about it's really about the power, yeah. right? And so if it's a three cell and it gets thirty five hundred, then uh, that's just more than what I need for what I would use the twenty two hundred for. Correct. So not only that, it saves me from possibly puffing it up on motors that would normally puff it up just because of the more amperage that's available. So that's correct. Uh, you know that would work. If it's the same size, you know, the challenge has been trying to get a 3,500, it would be too big right. or too heavy. And if it's yeah, lighter, definitely, definitely. yeah. And if it's lighter and the same size or smaller, well then, uh, you know, I'm right. all for it. But then, then I go back and I'll go to, well, do you have a 3,500 <laughs> in the 2,200 size? So, right? so how, yeah. how long can you fly with that 3,500? Well, that's, the, the the catch here is that these these batteries are particularly good for for our models because our models are not sport models, like something that you're going to fly really. I mean, with high high amp right, like a three D or a six L model right. or something. Now, if if you if you're thinking on EDA for something like that, just forget. Right. It. I mean, these batteries are enough for that because the the this charge rate it's it's way lower than than a lipo. Let's say uh, if if you're flying, let's say under 20 amps, uh, anything that flies under 20 amps doesn't necessarily need to be an FPV plane. It could be any, any kind of plane. Like <clears throat> even even we have some 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 customers and friends that are flying like like uh, some warbirds that they, they 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 have like slow KV motors, you know, like uh, 800 or 1,000 uh, 1,000 KV KV motors. For those that are pulling less than 20 amps, those are ideal. And the, the um, now going into our particular planes in, in in something like the air wing, you can get up to 70 or 80 percent more flying time for the same battery. So it's insane. I mean, literally, we are most most of the time getting bored before actually we need to land. <laughs> you know, which yeah. is which I never I never thought I would say that, but yeah, it's like. You used to squeeze until the last volt, yeah. you know, of the battery because you're having such a bolt that you don't want to land, etc. So, say, well, this is the the other way around. So you just just land it, man. Like whatever. <laughs> I'm sick of. <laughs> you know, it, it never, it never, yeah, it never gets uh, to the point that you you you, you have. I mean, because electric fly was always that that the mm -hmm. problem, right? I mean, yeah, sure. The, the five, five right. Time, right. You know? It's like well, five minutes. It's not enough. The, with these batteries, uh, if if you if you're thinking in something that pull the right amps out of the the, the system, uh, these batteries are the way to go, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, did you make them specifically for uh, the airplanes that you have in your line, or did you just build? Did they put these together for just any? Like, like they, you know, you mentioned something earlier about that they had never done batteries before. Now they jumped in. Mm -hmm. So did they jump in because of the aircraft line or did they just decide, oh, we should do this battery? The truth is that uh, I think uh, we mentioned that uh, at some point on, on, on some of our Facebook posts. The truth is that we were using them personally. I mean, uh, the, the company was using them all the time. We replaced most of our light posts. For a safety reason, for for uh, um, an, even a, a cost reason, you know. So we were using it for about a year before we start. I mean, we give us so much confidence in the, in this pack because we were using them for a long, long time before we start kind of uh, putting them out, you know, uh, for for selling. I think I think uh, um, yeah, it started all with with. Thinking in on on our own planes, and those models were developed. For example, the first model that we uh, I don't know if you can yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you here. go. 
Uh, this is this is for S one P that it's uh, thirty five hundred, uh -huh. right? So um, this 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 was the first one because uh, one of the, our, our let's say most popular planes is the the Nanotel, right. right? And this fits perfectly in Nanotel. I can keep you in the air over an hour and a half if you manage to throw wow. it, etc. <laughs> you you take one of these to the to the field and that's it, and then you go. Go for your lunch, you know. And, Holy and smokes! No for it. An hour and a half on that one battery. Yeah, 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 it's insane. It's insane. Well, especially when you fly FPV. I mean, maybe maybe Jay will know that you you are not kind of racing. Yeah. You know, it's just no. you're, you're cruising around cruising. and gliding a little bit and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But still, I mean, see the one hour and a half. That's cool. I I need that kind of time to figure out how to do my FPV yeah. stuff. So you know. I'm flying around yeah. up there. Oh, that didn't work. We got to go around again. Uh, that didn't work. We got to go around again. But uh, so that that battery wouldn't really fit though in my mini talent, right? It's a little big, uh, like a little big for for, for, for the for the mini talent, the the XUAV mini talent. Let's say that is not one of our products. Um, actually, we have a, a battery that would fit very well. That is the this this same battery, the 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 four S, but it's. Uh, Double the size because two two p, uh, and it's seven thousand, and and that will keep because I mean it's is a pretty efficient plane. I mean it's been in the market for long, and that that proves oh, that yeah, it's a great sold plane. millions of pieces. So that proves that it's a great plane, and um, uh, it's very efficient. That has a very a very good design for for efficiency, let's say, and uh, the, that battery will keep it forever. I I I don't even dare to to try to to test how long it's going to be in the air because it's going to be a long time for sure. Well, yeah, we I, I'm a real fan of the um the, the mini talent because I, I I like the fact that you can take it apart, put it back in the box, put it in my suitcase, and take it where I'm going. Um I don't have to worry about it breaking or whatever. The box is nice and sturdy, you know, I keep the I keep the uh, bubble wrap around it. It it travels really well and I really like that about it. Yeah, that was yeah. that was kind of always uh, the philosophy behind COSD. I mean, if you if you see the all the models are most no most all of them are mostly aimed for for being easy to transport. You know, you can really literally if whether it's magnets or screws or whatever, you can take the wings apart and patches and everything, and you can. Almost every plane in the COSD line is a backpack plane, which that was uh, the 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 goal from the beginning you know to have a something that's portable um nobody wants to be you know walking around with a 1.2 meter wingspan wait uh, what i plane, you know? <laughs> i buy strap a one point oh, it's a three meter glider <laughs> except except you guys no i know i know you fly i mean you fly the real deal guys that's, <laughs> that's what we're talking about toys yeah here, no 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 i uh you know it's funny you say that because uh i have actually i don't own the zoe hd like these guys do but i have literally flown both of their products sorry i cannot speak i, I cannot speak anymore with you michael so i was speak on the <laughs> well but but both of those guys were able to transport you know they jumped on a plane and came up here to arizona where i'm at and they both brought their talents and i was able to fly both uh, and it's, it was, I'm telling you, it's a really, really nice flying airplane. Uh, I did not, you know, it was kind of small. It's a, it's a fun plane to fly. Yeah. And once you get it kind of figured out, it's, it's fun to fly. It's good fun. I mean, it's, it's nice and slow. We brought it up to the, um, every year the, uh, in Arizona, we have an Arizona electric festival, uh, in February and Jay, mm -hmm. uh, actually Jay or Mike are both, or they both brought theirs up. And uh, and we literally just cruised around the electric festival the whole time. It, it was very convenient and uh, very fun for us. So, I think the uh, yeah, and and maybe I don't know if you, if you have um, for you and your, your your audience if if they have time to check. We have a not so long ago a new website we features all the products very very clearly. It's it's cohd.net. Of oh, course, your audience is not going to be able to to see this, but. Uh, so uh, we were talking about the, the nano talent. That is this guy. I don't know Correct. if he, if you can see, maybe it's too small. But uh, as you can see, we, we since then that nano talent is kind of one of the, the first plane uh, planes that, that the company launched. But now we have an updated version that is called nano talent Evo. That is in the the, the bottom there, bottom right. But then we have some some pretty good performers like the Talon GT Rebel that is on the left. 
in the bottom mm -hmm. left or in the top corner here on the right, the dark, dark shell. Those are those are mean FPV machines. They're, they're not like so, so much of a cruiser, you know. I mean, those are really have very powerful motors and the design, it's uh, it's much more, uh, let me see if I can, I can show you closer. But anyway, you can, you can, you can browse, uh, lately I will, I will leave you the, the, the okay. link. Uh, so you can share also with your audience. So these, these planes are, are, are another, another generation, let's say. That's what we call it Mark II because, uh, has nothing to do with the original Dart and the original, uh, Mini Talon and the original Orbit that, the series it was known for at the beginning mm -hmm. so anyway those planes are, are very interesting too to check um if you're into fpv or or just one uh, really good uh performing plane right you know? right i think i realized i just uh, let me let me get i back. called my plane a mini talent but i think it's a nano yeah, talent. Nano talent. Nano yeah talent. you say a mini talent yeah. Yeah. yeah it's okay i, I didn't did want to I didn't want to correct you. That's actually a competition. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Oops. It's a, well, I, nah, this, yeah, I mean, I, I only, I've only ever had the ZOHD stuff, so I, I wouldn't even know what yeah. that looked like or, or even care about it at the moment. So there's so many talents in the market yeah. that even it's, it's, I know it's unless you're working for one of the companies, it's probably you're not going to know what, which one is what. But uh, the, the truth is that our product is called Nano Talent. There you go. All right, and that's what I have. You, that's what I. Yeah, then you have the mini talent is from XUAV. That is another company. Uh, the probably you're not going to find anyone that can even speak English to talk to, <laughs> so it's okay. And <laughs> no, uh, really, yeah. really, to, to be completely honest, I mean, sure. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you will pop up the window. You see a, a guy there, you know, eating eating uh, <laughs> rice. Definitely, no, no, it's it's, it's completely the truth. Oh, I was going to say when I was writing to you via email. When you said your name was Re, and I and I kind of went right, <laughs> you know, because I'm I'm sitting there going, oh, I I knew a French guy with that name, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah, this this guy's a French guy, okay, sure, but after a couple of te after a couple of uh, messages, I'm like, wow, his English, he has a really solid, you know, foundation on English. Uh, maybe this guy, you know, he, no, of course, of course, of course, of uh course. Look, every year there's a big uh, like a hobby, hobby expo in mm -hmm. Beijing here in China, which is mm -hmm. it's amazing. It's really good. I mean, you have all the big brands, you know, like exhibiting with, and and some of the the the, the brands, the big brands from abroad. You have eFlight, you have a uh, you know the Japanese ones like Robo or, or I don't know whatever uh, other uh, brands out there, and it's it's really massive. It's really nice, and you can see in every booth, um, especially the Chinese companies, of course, there's no Westerners working there because it's China, you know? I mean, right. it's another place. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm one of the few, yeah. It's not, it's, it's not something that I, 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 I feel like something special. I, some, some, some Chinese companies here that they don't have any Westerners, also they're doing really well mm -hmm. and they're innovating like crazy and they have a killer marketing and they have a killer image and they're doing great products. And, and of course, there's a bunch, like everything else that not. But um, I wouldn't say that uh, in that sense, I think Asia has um, grow, grow a lot in, in, in learning how to how to market their products. I think that was a key before, you know, they, maybe they have the stuff, but, but it always looked like, eh, you know, it had, it doesn't, it didn't have that charm, you know, but that maybe some companies like, like, uh, I don't know, Horizon to say something right in the West, or I don't know if I can mention it, but anyway, or, <laughs> or E-Flight yeah. or whatever yeah. else, uh, they, they have that charm, you know, maybe for some people, um, but now, now that that it's been changing since the last couple of years, you had companies like Emacs. I don't mm -hmm. know if you're familiar. I've with actually had some of their servos. Yeah, that, that's a killer company. Right. You know, I mean, so many um, companies that they're based here in in China. I mean, they have their offices in the US, etc. Too, but but they're mainly Chinese companies. Let's say. And but they they have a very uh, very open minded and very mm, they share their values. You know, with the, the Western world in the sense. So uh, GWS used to be a big company over there, and when uh, they just started, uh, I used to have a Tiger Moth. Yeah, 
Right. There you go. There you and go. and yep. so when they first started marketing, uh, uh, Jay and I were both test pilots for GWS. Wow. Wow. They had some killer models. I remember that. They did. Yeah. I had I had a couple of them like the P thirty eight that was was awesome. I mean it it was small a small plane yeah. but oh that one right there oh. it's that's that's an EDF and uh, it's their uh, it's their A A four it's sitting up A4. there <laughs> yeah I think I think uh, and 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 the the props mm-hmm. I mean there was the, there was a time that you can uh, get any decent products yeah. except those yeah, yeah. unfortunately they uh, they just didn't keep up with the uh, the way the market was going I think they had a lot of uh, the same issues you were talking about is that the guy that we dealt with, uh, he was in China, so we were emailing back and forth when email was, you know, dial-up network, and uh, then we would, you know, tell him that he said, "Oh, we have a new plane, and would like to send it to you guys so that you can kind of test it and give us the feedback." But it wasn't, you know, it took so long to get here and so long to get the information back that other com- other com- companies they just kind of jumped in there, and all of a sudden it was like, you know, hey, all those products kind of came over, so. Now you were mentioning uh, earlier about uh, the aircraft. You said you had bigger airplanes. Uh, do you have new lines that are coming out? Or are you just going to kind of stay with what you have, or is there like this constant flow of new, new, new stuff? And we understand you don't have to give us any information that you can't s- disseminate out into the public. So no, 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 no. I will. I will I'll be happy to 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 tell you the truth. You we'll, know, we we'll promise we'll that... edit out anything you say that <laughs> might not be. <laughs> Okay. We're not going to do that. We're not going to edit <laughs> I, out anything. I, I will keep that in mind. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the truth is that we have some beautiful plans before all this. Mess, mm-hmm. you know? That's true. Yeah. <laughs> like most people, right. you know. Yeah. So it's like I mean, we were toasting this New Year, say, "Man, 2020 is going to be yeah. killer." Yeah, and yeah, it, was. it was. Yeah. Uh, in 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 a very different sense of the word. Uh, <clears throat> So we did have some plans. Actually, right now we're kind of uh, in in, in uh, like uh, survival mm-hmm. mode, trying to see how the things are going to play out. Because one of the things that is is affecting the most is how the people is moving and how they can gather to get you know and 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 fly, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Nobody's really able unless you live in the middle of nowhere. <clears throat> to go out and and go to clubs and fly, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, in some places, uh, in some places, it's being reinfor- uh, re- uh, reinforced really heavily. You know, the the, the thing that you can go from, from your house. So, it's kind of killing the whole picture for this year. Even though we do have some some new planes coming, hopefully, we we are going to be annou- uh, able to announce them uh, at some point. Uh, during this year, we are we are, something that we are missing that we don't have in our lineup. It's uh, something more like a glider style, something that can oh, nice. glide a little better or slope or uh, but FPV at the same time, you know. So we are we are betting actually to um, a smaller toy, but smaller in the lighter way of of the of the of the meaning. Um, to, to lighter planes and, and less, how to say, um, that looks le- less threatening somehow. Because, you know, besides the, the virus, we have all this situation with the, 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 the FPV rules around the world and the attack of, of some governments to the RC community doesn't, because they don't understand exactly what we're doing and how we do it and how dangerous it is, etc. So uh, we need to go to a to a corner with our products where they can cause the the the, the less possible damage in case you crash. You know, actually, our planes first being mostly of them EPP, and second, they most of them are lightweight. They're not going to kill anybody. We know that, but uh, some people is feeling, you know, that they need something that can really take to their local park. But has some performance, you know, not just like a little toy there, right? And that's that's why you came out with the Dart two hundred and fifty line, right? Yes, exactly. That's one of the reasons that 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 was our latest release. Let's say the the Dart two hundred and fifty G. It it, it it's, it's aimed to these people that they want to play safe. You know, they want to have the full full on FPV experience with flight controllers and and, and you know on flight. Uh, 
and, and good camera gear, like HD, etc. But under 250 grams, we see a complete challenge, you know, because it's a problem. I mean, to pack all that gear under 250 grams, is, it's a problem. So after a lot of research and development, we, we came up with this, this little wing that it's amazing. Actually, it's one of the planes that I, I'm finding the most just because it's convenient, you know, I just toss it in the car and, and it's always there and it's easy to fly and, and it gives a lot of um, a great experience for what it is, you know. Most people today are just, I, I find like, like, uh, like illegal immigrants, you know, <laughs> like really worried that so. <laughs> oh, it's, it's the truth, you know, you, you can see their faces there. They are completely paranoid looking at over the shoulders if someone is going to show up and tell them something. Uh, so, which is understandable. So Mike calls the that bandit flying, like a pirate flying. It's a bandit. Yeah, like a yeah. bandit. Oh yeah. So he calls it yeah, bandit yeah. flying because everybody yeah. runs out and they're just kind of secretive in the park and they're hiding behind a tree, you know, out there flying. And then they grab their stuff, <laughs> jump in the car, and go somewhere else. So Jay and I have done that as well. Uh, we've terrorized a few towns, bandit flying. <laughs> so, but we understand that. Yeah, <clears throat> it's a, it's a, it, it happens to me. We have parks here in Arizona that are actually designated for for flying, and uh, and guys will fly FPV, the mini talon or the uh, the nano talons. We've actually flown in the in those parks. So, but they're set up for people to come out and actually fly. So we have we have that going for us. Well, but that's that's fantastic, and that's that's why America is so great, <laughs> you know, because you have those those places. But to, to be to be fairly honest, most countries don't, don't, don't right. they don't have the luxury. I mean, they need to literally sneak out, you know, like a, like a criminal, <laughs> and try to to fly their pack, and then run fast before the the, the, the authorities yeah, arrive. No doubt, no doubt. So yeah. Well, uh, what other product? I mean, we've talked about the batteries. We've talked about some of your airplanes. Uh, are there other products that uh, you guys carry or that we should be interested in that we can pass along? Yes, we're working in our second flight controller. It's a, it's a unit that the 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 first one that we we launched was called Copilot and Copilot Lite, and it's a it's basically a, a unit that could be very interesting for your audience because it has nothing to do with FPV. Actually, I mean, it has something if you want. But it could be used on absolutely any plane. It gives you the possibility of have return to home with GPS on any plane. Especially, uh, this was actually thought uh, and meant to be used on planes like scale planes or warbirds, etc. That you don't want any crap on your model, right? You want to keep it pristine and mint and beautiful on the plane. You don't want cables going on and stuff sticking out of the model. So this is a very small unit with very, very small, it, it weights less than 21 grams that for most of the models that you own, guys, will be like nothing. The plane will never notice that it has that. It's 21 grams and will give you, in case you want, a flick of a switch, you have a three position switch, you can keep it manual and you will never know that the thing is there. Then you have a second position where it gives you some um, uh, six uh, axis stabilization. So in case you're freaking out or something's going on with the plane, it can assist you to, to, to land it or, or to have a, a, maybe you're teaching someone to fly and you're not so, you don't trust them too much, you know, to, to, to trust your plane. You can turn that on and the plane will level itself. Every time they let go of the, sti let go of the sticks, the plane will go completely straight. So and the third so, position. So, so Mike yeah. should probably put that in his L thirty nine and let me and let me land it. Yeah, no doubt. It's a good. It's a good. It's a. It's a, it's a very good aid. And and the, and the third position it, it gives you a return to home. So wherever the plane is, whether if it lost signal or you action this this switch uh, um, on your own, the plane will turn around, come back to you, and start circling over your head at around 70, 80 meters over your head in a 40 or 50 meters uh, radius circle. And and that's one of the features that to me are the most important. I, I used to have a couple of even expensive EDF here, like F35 and from, how is this company called? Um, well, it doesn't matter. And and those are very expensive. And it's something that, that you don't, don't really want to trash that easy, you know? So having that, uh, unit on the plane, it gives me, it's, it's, it's an insurance, you know, 
right? right. And not only for that, maybe you have a call in the middle of, of, of the field and it's a very important call, you need to take it. You're not going to rush and try to land the plane, you know, in a way that maybe you crash or something. You just flick return to home, you take the call and the plane is going to stay there, you know? That's amazing. No, I just uh, take the call yeah. anyway. I don't, you know, I don't really care about that, you know, get my plane back. I just take the call, let it fly away. It's, it's okay. <laughs> So uh, that's that's one of our that's that's and and, and it's, it's it's fairly cheap. We're talking about around fifty bucks for this complete unit, which is a nonsense. I mean, we have customers that have bought one for one of each uh, of their planes, and some of them have more than twenty five planes, and they just put in, you know. And it's something that you have there. It's completely transparent to your current system. It's not going to affect the range or the the, the performance of your plane at any any point, and it's compatible with. Any V tail, T tail, EDF, uh, whatever you want. I mean, except for for multi rotors, whatever thing that flies and has some some kind of yaw, uh, uh, pitch and roll, uh, this this will do. And we are working on the second um, generation of this this autopilot that is going to be more FPV oriented for people that want to have some um, on screen display, you know regarding some data of the flight. But that that's the, but the, the first one, it's absolutely uh, open for anyone that just want to have an extra layer of insurance in, uh, with, with their model, you know, maybe you have some really expensive model, or maybe you don't feel confident when you're going to do a maiden. You know, some, some planes are a little more, uh, how to say, temperamental mm -hmm, yeah, than others, sure. you know, so, yeah. So you want to say, just in case that we have this thing, for the for the maiden, I may not need it, but if I need it, I just flick the switch, oh. and, and I, uh, so, so it would be better than not having yeah, it. Sure, sure. So, sounds cool. It sounds like a well, cool thing. Uh, we know that you uh, set some time of, uh, aside for us, and uh, and, I, and we're kind of coming up on that time, so we we don't want to you know capture your whole day, and we'd like to you know kind of wrap it up for you, but. Um, no, it's been it's, it's been really fast. I'm I'm surprised how how fast it went. I mean, that was good. Yeah. yeah. I know it goes right. It goes by really fast. I have to keep uh, watch on the time. Uh, all right. So if they wanted to uh, buy some of the airplanes or the lion packs, they they can go to zohd.net. Yeah, we have a shop there. Yeah. Okay. And the other other website is Sonic Model, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. yeah. I want to take a chance to, to to give a shout out to our our partners in US, um, Ray C and Get FPV uh, in Florida. Those those are. We have another uh, other shops that they are also, you know, available to get our products. But yeah. these these two are the main the main places. If you want to get some CRC stuff or or Sonic Mall stuff, those are the places to go. Okay, yeah. Um But uh, yeah, you can totally get in touch with us. We, we are very active on social media, and we we will point you in the right direction where to get our products. Where depending on where where you live, you know, which part of the world. Yeah. Well, we uh, do have a worldwide audience, so uh, wherever you are in the world, check out those two websites. Uh, AJ has been a, a great guest to have on for uh, our podcast. Sure we'll has. definitely have to send you a link for where the podcast is. If you guys want to be able to use it on your site, you can do that too. It's up to you uh, how you do, how you just rip that. Of course, so. we will we will we will repost it. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, well, I appreciate appreciate so much having me. Yeah, Thank not you. a problem. Thank you very right. much, you guys. You're very kind and 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 and. Lovely people. Thanks. Well, it's been really great having AJ on, and we really appreciate the time that you have uh, spent with us. So we will definitely uh, look forward to, um, you know, flying those products some more and give a report. So if you are out there and you haven't had a chance to look at these Lion Pack batteries, go to uh, zohd.net and give AJ a try. I've always liked that dart. I think that I like the way that wing sweeps for, forward like that. I've been, I've been wanting to try it. Then maybe I'll do that this year sometime. Yeah, I think uh, Tim. We had him on last week, and I think he has yeah, a dart. He, it's oh, a, I, think I think he, he has a first gen generation dart. So first gen dart. Uh, the okay. nice part is that yeah, with the mini tal or the mini talon or the nano talon, excuse me. And yeah, uh, let's not let's not let's not give the bad guys the, <laughs> yeah, the wrong yeah. guys. Right. Yeah. Don't wanna, yeah. We don't want to tell them to go to the competition. Mm -hmm. No. For the Nano Talon yeah, exactly. and uh, I thought, oh, and the Dart, they have Generation 2, so they got rid of a couple of 
quirks that were in that line for the nanotron. Oh, cool. Cool. Like Mike, I uh, AK Mike, I gave you a uh, I printed you out a straight wing set so yeah, that you, yeah. it takes that little bit of dehedral out right. of the wing. Uh, and they yeah, went ahead yeah. and they they did they took that dehedral out and the plane flies a lot better with it out. So yeah, and that uh, it does because I'd flown mine with that three D printed part parts I should say, and it works great. I mean, it yeah. flies fantastic. So yeah, yeah. Well, unfortunately, our hour is up. Yet again. Wow. It goes by really fast. You know, I love having guests on, mm-hmm. but man, you get rolling to talking to those yeah. guys, and I feel bad cutting them off. But I'm like, hey, man, <laughs> our hour's gone. Even AJ was like, holy smokes, look how fast this one. Well, hey, this I, yeah. we might have to put this down in the record books because this is our furthest interview. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, he is um, – not only is he in the future, yep. right? But Space he's, time continuum. Uh, a little bit ahead of us. He's talking to us from right. tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> it's right. Weird. Uh, yeah, this is the farthest one we've ever had. So I will tell you that if you are in Hong Kong or Germany or wherever it is, and you uh, have an interest of being on a podcast, promote your product. Go ahead and email us at the Parkflyer Podcast at gmail dot com or join our Facebook listeners group. Uh, which is the uh, Park Flyer Podcast listeners. And that's where we actually ha- got AJ to begin with. We started that conversation there. So it's been good having him uh, on our podcast. Well, we're definitely have to have him on again because I felt cheated because my my link to him was kind of uh, delayed, more delayed than you two guys. Yeah, it was a delay. So, yeah, it was tough. I could hear you talking and then he would get yeah, it like you tomorrow. Yeah, got so. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Well, you know, we're going to leave it there, I guess. But from Michael here in Arizona. Jay from the hills of Texas. And A.K. Mike in Texas. We'll see you in two weeks. Let's fly. You have been listening to the Park Flyer Podcast. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to your next visit. Please give our show a star rating and review, and feel free to email us your questions, topics, or suggestions to parkflyerpodcast at gmail.com. 